Hey, Kevin here, Skylabs, bringing you another video. The first one from 2023, and it's gonna be one of my favorites. We're gonna be talking about the Sansui AU line. The AU line was Sansui's integrated amplifier line. Definitely kind of a higher end. They wanted to go a step above uh, their competitors with this line, and it shows. Uh, they did several things different, and we're gonna get into that, but really quick, we really appreciate the amount of interest that you all have shown in Skylabs recently. Unfortunately, it is really hard at this point to keep up with the amount of questions and emails that we are getting. And even worse, and I hate to say this, but the amount of phone calls we're getting at the shop that don't relate to the shop. And it's unfair to the customers that are here. It's unfair to the staff. And it's unfair to you in a way that we can't give you the answers you're looking for. When you call asking for what is something worth, that is really almost impossible in that what something is worth in Los Angeles, California is completely different than what something is worth in Podunk, Iowa. Giving you any kind of accurate number is just impossible. Asking troubleshooting questions is almost impossible, not to mention our techs are so focused on their job that breaking them off of what they're doing to ask questions about stuff that they might not even know about is unfair to them as well. So anyway, we are planning on rolling out a YouTube membership program here soon in our way to help answer those more in-depth questions doing a live stream once every week or once every couple of weeks. We haven't figured that out yet, but you'll be able to ask us questions and myself and or Rob can be there to hopefully get you some answers that you're looking for. Um, that is coming soon, so just bear with us, be patient. I really wanna thank everybody who's made purchases recently at our website. It really does help this channel right now. We are putting a lot of resources back into the channel as it is growing and we feel like it is something that's worth pursuing. So thank you for supporting the channel in that way and we hope to bring you some more great products in the future. All right, so let's get into this list. This probably will be one of my favorite lists in that I really do personally love this AU line as much as I do. They did a lot of things different than the other manufacturers, all the way down to the cosmetics. Keep in mind, besides the year these were made and the amount of wattage, this is all our opinion. It's nothing more than that. These are just fun lists that give us a reason to talk about some of these amazing products that came out in the 70s. For those that will say in the comments, because we get these all the time, they'll say, how could you omit this model number? And to me, that's like saying, they'd be like you doing a list of your favorite ice cream and me commenting saying, why didn't you include Rocky Road? It's no different. This is just what we like. This is what we found in the last, you know, seven, 10 years we've been doing this to be our favorites. It really isn't based on anything other than our personal preference or our, what we like. So no big deal. Don't take this stuff too seriously. It's just fun. It's just good, clean, vintage audio fun. That's it. So, and coming in at the number five spot, and this easily could be in the number one spot. And that's how little the ranking on this has to do with the quality or what I think of the particular piece. Anyway, number five, AU505. Definitely the smallest unit on the list, the least amount of wattage. These came out in 1972. It's a solid state integrated amplifier with power of 15 watts per channel into eight ohms. I would say on average, you would probably expect to pay around 125 to $600, just depending on uh, condition, physically and working. Um, there's so many really good things about the AU505. They're really simple. They have a smaller footprint. If you have efficient speakers and you're wanting that vintage sound, you don't want to spend a ton of money. I don't know if you can do much better than the 505. The matching tuner looks really nice sitting on top of it. Even if you don't intend to listen to AM or FM, I always buy the, uh, the matching tuner just as more of a completionist and to give my audio a little bit of audio jewelry. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I will say this about the sound of these too. And most of you know that I don't spend a lot of time describing sound in that we're talking about 40 year old plus year old amplifiers and they are all gonna be in different conditions cosmetically and internally. 
you might pick up one that's had some repairs, maybe even some shoddy repairs, or you might have one that has some corrosion in it, or you know, different levels of service needed, where if mine has been completely overhauled and is totally in spec, it's gonna sound completely different than yours. Or who knows, maybe somebody even put the wrong parts in one. So me trying to describe small nuances between a 40 year old piece of electronics to me just seems kind of silly. However, I do agree with most people that will say that these, and, and I'm talking about the AU505, might be a little bit on the warm side, more tube-like. And the reason I think they say this is because this is early solid state technology. And I, I think that the engineers that were building the early solid state pieces of stereo equipment their ears were used to hearing tubes. And so I think they kind of geared solid state to sound like what they were used to. And I do think towards the mid 70s and the late 70s, everybody kind of followed a trend of, it started to get a little bit more clinical and a little bit more detailed and away from the tube-like sound and started becoming more what some people would call sterile. Um, but that is what solid state sounds like in comparison to tubes. So I do think that the earlier integrated and solid state amplifiers from this era do sound more tube-like, but I think it's because of the way the engineers wanted them to sound rather than just being a random coincidence. Anyway, if you got a really efficient set of speakers, that 15 watts per channel is gonna be plenty of power. I would love to have another one of these if I had a small office, a uh, bedroom, anything like that. That's the AU505. And the next one on the list would be the Sansui AU717. These were manufactured from 1977 to 1979. They had a power output of 85 watts per channel and eight ohms. And I think you'd probably pay 500 to 1500 for one of these. Uh, depending on the level of service needed and physical condition. The trick with the AU717, there's two things. The rack handles will make a really big difference in the cost that you will pay as they are, I think they're getting about 200 bucks just for the rack handles. And most of the time when you see these on eBay, you'll see you know, the amplifier and then that same seller will have another auction for the rack handles because they know they're not gonna get the two to $300 if they sold the amplifier with the rack handles on it. I hope that makes sense. The other thing that you do need to watch out for with this series and this line specifically is the volume control potentiometer. And the only reason I say that is because the last two or three of these that I've had have had issues with that potentiometer. Unfortunately, it is proprietary to that amplifier and they're really expensive if you do need to replace it. We found that the last couple that have come in have had dead spots or they favor the left or the right. There's, there's not really an easy fix to it right now. The last one I sold kind of at a cheaper price, thinking somebody might put it in their garage or use it as a second stereo in that for the people out there that are OCD, you would need to take your balance knob and it would have to sit off a couple degrees and there's a lot of OCD people in the audiophile world out there that that would drive them crazy, kind of myself included in a way. So anyway, if you are planning on looking at a 717, really listen to any volume discrepancies between the left and right stereo balance when you're manipulating that volume knob. That would be the only thing I would watch out for these. Otherwise, really cool looking amplifier. I think they, they make a presence. I like the rack handle ability. Yeah, and that's, that's our number four which is the Sansui AU717. All right, and the next on our list is the Sansui AU7700. These were manufactured from 1974 to 1976. Power output of 54 watts per channel into eight ohms. And I'm seeing a range of about 500 to $2,000, depending on what's needed and the current condition that they're in. Uh, the AU7700, I love the curves on the front of these. Again, the black face looks really nice. That is one of the things that they were doing different than everybody else. You know, uh, everybody else was still doing the silver face stuff. A lot of people come in and they'll see the AU line 
and they don't think it's vintage. They think it's a 90s piece because they associate 70s with silver. And I, I do too. One of the best things Sansui is known for is really being trendsetters in visual design. I, I love their, their fonts, their lettering, their simplicity. I mean, the black idonized faceplate goes a long way for me. Um, but I like, I like them both, I do. I think Yamaha did the silver counterpart to the Sansui's black really well. Both really simple designs. And again, um, you know, with the tuner, I think these things look incredible. I like the, the little chrome curved front faceplate uh, bezels on the side. I think, you know, if you walk in a room and you see a 7700 and uh, the matching tuner above it, um, you're gonna take notice. They, they really are, I think, one of the better looking sets on the list. They sound incredible when they're serviced. If you can get your hands on one, own it for a while. If you don't love it, sell it. You're not gonna have trouble selling it. They sell themselves. And that's the beauty of almost any one of them on this list. But the 7700, maybe just a little bit more. And that was our number three pick, the Sansui AU 7700. All right, coming in at number two, we've got the Sansui AU999. Man, how cool are these things? They are big, you notice them. I think they're 18 and a half inches wide. These were manufactured from 1970 to 1972. They are the oldest ones on the list, coming at 50 watts per channel into eight ohms. And these have some really cool features on them that you don't see in a lot of other integrated amplifiers. Stuff like um, phono level and aux adjust in the back. There, there are three trim pots on the back of these units so you can balance your turntables and your auxiliary inputs, which make, I think back in the day, they mainly did this for reel-to-reel -reel recording. So you could have two turntables playing at the same time and you could jump back and forth uh, to your reel-to-reel -reel and keep your levels the same so it didn't jump up and you didn't have to make a bunch of adjustments, uh, which was really cool. And today it makes nice for A being stuff. You know, because if you are going to A and B, uh, two pieces of gear or two records, getting them to the same output level is key so you don't favor one for decibels and not for the sound quality. So anyway, really cool units, really well built. They sound incredible. They look incredible. I really like the black glossy trim, almost like they, uh, they used, it's almost framed in a way. Yeah, if you're looking for a legendary AU, integrated amplifier, grab a 999 and grab the matching tuner. Once again, with those green back dial, they look incredible. And that is the number two, that's the Sansui AU999. And coming in at the number one spot, you guys, most of you guys that watch this channel uh, know what my number one's gonna be. And anybody that comes in the store probably knows what my number one's gonna be. And anybody that knows Sansui knows what my number one's gonna be, and that is the AU20000. In my opinion, it might be the king of vintage 70s integrated amplifiers. And for every reason that you might possibly give it a number one spot. And that is for its amazing design choices, its incredible sound, and the build quality and serviceability on these. They just nailed this one. And I'm really fortunate to own one. I bought my AU20000 before I even opened Skylabs. And just an interesting story in that I was sitting on my couch with my wife at the time, Facebook Marketplace wasn't even a thing. I had my Craigslist app that would notify me if a Morant, Sansui, Pioneer, or anything like that popped up for sale. I got a notice that an AU20,000 had been posted. So I immediately called him and the response was, yes, I still have it. I literally just posted it and I said, no problem, I'm on my way. I go in the garage and it's just sitting there. And I mean, this thing is pristine. It looks like the day it was made, not a speck of dust on it or anything. And I'm not gonna say how much I paid for it because it is, it's ludicrous. Um, it is really, uh, it's less than a dinner, let's put it that way. And I remember I walked in and the guy said, do you wanna hear it play? And I said, nope, I'm good. And he said, uh, well, you know, if you get it home and it doesn't work, bring it back. I'll give you your money back. You know, in my head, I'm going, well, the volume knob is worth more than I paid for it. So um, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. And it's been mine ever since. 
I've done a few modifications since I've had it. We replaced every single capacitor in it with Nichicon Gold Audio Grade capacitors. And then I also installed some red LED lights on the inside. This is a reversible very easily and it did not hurt the integrity of my piece, but I'm not selling it anyway, so it really doesn't matter. These do have some issues and they are the switches. At least that's the issues I've had with mine in that I've gone in there several times and cleaned them with even D100, the high concentrate version of deoxid. And it seems like every couple years I have to do this with mine. Maybe I've got um, some bad switches or it could be that being the condition it's in, it does look like it barely got used or it didn't get used for a long time. And in a way that is really bad for electronics in that if you're not exercising your volume knobs or any of your switches or potentiometers, it's likely for corrosion to grow. And when you do manipulate it, it pulls a chunk of the wafer off and now you have a dead spot. So maybe that's what happened. I'm not saying this is a problem with all of them, but that's the situation I've had with mine. I haven't seen a lot of these. They don't come through the door very often. They are very rare. The AU 20,000 was manufactured between 1975 and 1977. They have a power output of 170 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and they really are all over the board right now. You'll see these from 1500 in really poor condition all the way up to 5500 um, restored. So there's a pretty good range involved with these. They are very heavy, so shipping is going to cost you quite a bit if you do find one. I do think these are gonna be one of the more coveted pieces. You don't have to be in this hobby a long time to realize this really is kind of a unique piece. Even just the styling, the red outer exterior and everything about it is, is really unique and really well made. So I don't see the value of these ever going down. I don't plan on ever selling mine. And if you do get one, I would hang on to it as long as you can. So that is our number one pick. That is the Sansui AU 20,000, and that concludes our list. And once again, you know, keep in mind, if, if your piece, if your AU or your Sansui didn't make it on the list, it doesn't mean it's a bad piece. I can't, it, once it, it'd be like, it'd be like my favorite ice cream list again, and not listing every flavor of ice cream. That defeats the point of a favorite list, and it also... I don't know what it does, but it does that. So um, hope you enjoyed the video. We do have a lot of things coming up in the future. Stick around. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Like it. Leave a comment. I always enjoy reading the comments. There's been some really great um, discussions that have happened throughout the videos. And yep, let's have a great 2023. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Appreciate it.